What's up guys, it's Kendall here, and today we're going to be talking about the rat rice cycle. Ooh, the rat rice cycle, as I call it, never ending. Uh, this uh, term, the rat race, uh, it's kind of a negative connotation as informing, as a juxtapos uh, juxtaposition. Uh, they're comparing uh, rats as to humans uh, as they're chasing cheese as into money. Um, yeah, what a nice juxtaposition. Uh, but so this is something that I've actually went through when I was 19, but I was just a kid just living his life in California. And I didn't come across this concept until I was around 21 years old. And so I'm actually glad I was able to go through this because uh, now with me now being officially debt free, I don't owe money to anything. I literally have zero liabilities. Now I'm able to really understand on how the rat race cycle works and how I'm seeing this affecting people who are 10, 20, 30, 40 years older than me. So first thing is we have to work to money. Usually traditionally when we graduate school, school, uh, or whether it's high school, uh, college, or whether it's training school, you have to either work. You have to go work for money because you need money. And so typically either unless you're starting your own business or you're getting paid through a company, uh, through employees, you typically have to work for your money. Then that's what we call income, right? This is your hard earned money. Uh, now, typically if you're in a industry such as real estate or you're starting a, a business to where you're not necessarily getting paid in your time, but you're getting paid in your results, uh, this applies to you just a bit differently uh, but typically for those uh, who are working a nine-to-five job are either getting paid a uh, salary wage or commission uh, and typically you will get paid but after S uncle sam takes his cut which is taxes now third thing goes to bills or as i call it, with personal responsibility now the ironic thing is is we've been told by people as that there's two things you can't get rid of and that's death and taxes well i think they should add three and that's death taxes and bills <laughs> Uh, right. I mean, you can die and then 30 days later, they send you a bill for using your cell phone. I mean, that's just, that's just how bills are. They're so residual. They don't go anywhere. But typically with bills is now a lot of times we need to support ourselves while we're working, right? Either, I mean, you need food, you need shelter, you need transportation to and from work, utilities, other things like that. There's a cost to paying, uh, that you have to pay in order for you to continue to work and to uh, just live life. Um, and this is where it comes to lifestyle. Now, this is unfortunately where it comes the big dagger. Um, now, typically, this comes from a, a place of unfulfillment. Now, don't get me wrong. I love lifestyle. I love seeing the nice cars, having beautiful houses. I mean, other than San Diego for crying out loud, I literally live on the beach. <laughs> but what I'm saying in general is it comes to, unfortunately, it comes from a place of instant gratification. And that's just the way the world we live in. We live in a world where everybody wants their steak in two minutes and their eggs in 30 seconds. An instant gratification world where there's instant messaging, instant relationships, <laughs> uh, instant oatmeal, things of that nature. And unfortunately, this costs a lot of people a lot of money because it comes to what I call lifestyle inflation. Uh, but typically is when I'll, I'll go to this in, in the very next topic, uh, but it comes to what no savings is that we have daily stressors in life. As we work, we work at our jobs. When we leave, we want to literally desensitize work because uh, according to most people, uh, the 60%, 63% of the people don't love what they do at work. And then 53% of those people are not even engaged. At, they're not fully engaged at work, right? They're daydreaming and thinking about other things <laughs> while working. Uh, so typically this has come a, a bad habit. This is unfortunately where a lot of the bad habits get to start, but that comes with this one thing. And that is no savings, where they're living beyond their income. Uh, so when people ask me, well, Kendall, how are you able to come debt-free? Because I'm 24 now. How are you able to become debt-free? And I had to take a look at my liabilities and my assets, and I had to make a goal of I'm going to eliminate every single liability I've had. Uh, so typically, this comes from where they earn first. They go to work. They get paid. And instead of taking some money and putting it to their savings, they go right back to buying luxuries once because we live in a world where it's flashy, advertisements are just thrown at us, and because we're habitually spenders by nature, we love to buy things. So we buy all kinds of crazy things. Now, when this comes to there's no savings, the interesting that I heard of, or at least that I did some research on, is typically the top 1%, is that right here? The top 1%, save an average of 38% of their income, whereas the bottom 90% only save around four. Now, this statistic kind of is jaded a little bit just due to the sheer fact, well, I mean, of course, the top 1% are going to have more money uh, to save because compared to the liabilities, their assets are producing way much more through the cost of living in terms of bills, rent, insurance, food, uh, transportation to and from work, 
they obviously can save more money compared to uh, the bottom low. So this this kind of throws the topic out of the window that rich people just buy a bunch of money and just waste it, right? The rich are rich for a reason. They The one thing they understand very much more important than anything is money and how they're utilizing it uh, through the capitalistic system. Uh, and so this comes very dangerous because what most people do is they spend, they go to work, they get paid, then they go out and buy need, they go out and be needs, but then they also buy wants, not understanding that. And then after they buy whatever they want, they have spent very little bit into investing or just very little at all. So instead of paying themselves first, they pay themselves dead last, which means you're hurting yourself for retirement in the long run because, more, because again, we live in an instant gratification world. We want things quickly. We want it brand now, right? I want a Tesla and a Samsung Note 10 Plus so bad. I want it right now, but I understand the law of instant gratification, and so I'm holding off until a bit until I feel like, all right, I can go buy this. And this is where the worst part of comes in, is debt and loans and credit cards, right? This is where a major of this pitfall comes in from not saving and just overall through this rat race cycle, right? Debt, unfortunately, has become a nece uh, necessary evil to people as into this has just been part of the culture. Uh, typically, this is where you have things like mortgages, as I stated here, credit cards, car payments. And the reason why is because we live in a world where necessities are upon thousands and thousands of dollars. Cars are over four or five figures. Houses are over five, six figures. And so we live in a world to where it promotes a lot of credit uh, but most people don't have formidable or inadequate uh, financial education. I didn't at the time. I didn't really understand finances until I was 22 years old. But unfortunately, I learned that at one of the worst times where I nearly lost everything except my own mind. Uh, and during those times to where things like mortgages, car payments, credit card loans have become a major part in most people's bank statements. But what they don't understand is with that, that ruins their net worth. Now, don't get me wrong, before I go on, a mortgage is not necessarily a bad debt. Majority of the time, that's gonna be a good debt, especially if you're in a house that's appreciating your value and you're producing equity. But for the majority, in terms of like a, a loan such as a car payment, those are absolutely horrendous loans. Like you're, you're paying for a car that's depreciating your value every single year, every single mile you're driving on it, and then not only by then, is when either it comes to either reselling it or when it comes to you keeping a long term, it doesn't essentially work out to where most people just buy a new car because again, we live in an instant gratification world and typically when you buy a car through things like that, it typically comes to buy the worse, right? Like I said, I want that Tesla so bad, but then I'm looking at these $900 car payments, even when I have a 720 credit score, that's just not good, right? I'm not spending $900 a month on a car, right? And that's part of this, the car payment, the other thing is the interest. And so now you having debt and loans that are literally crippling. But the worst part about debt is now it cripples people of spending money and putting in their savings. So now the money, if they had money for savings, majority of that is just getting eaten up by debt. And once it continues to get eaten up by debt, most people can't save money for retirement, which is why this phrase of most people don't know when they'll stop working, either they work until debt, is because they haven't had the proper financial under education to understand what is good debt and what is bad debt and what is a good time to get a loan and what is a horrible time to get Oh, I forgot one more thing. How did I forget this? Student loans. Now, I knew a friend of mine who just recently paid off her student loans. Congratulations to her. Shout out to her. But at the most part, they're paying student loans for what, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, something insane. And every single thing that's taking out, and the worst thing I'll get into about a loan is because it's such a small, insignificant amount of a number. Now, mind you, I said I wanted a Tesla, which on the big hand is $900 a month, right? But typically for other car payments, you're paying around roughly maybe $350, $405. It seems so small, so small every month, but those things start to add up. And so with the people being engulfed in debt, well, in order to pay off debt, now they have to go back to work. To go back to work to produce income that are making less because Uncle Sam is taking more money and as inflation increases, as uh, as wages and salaries are stagnant, now bills are not going away because you still have to pay bills. In order for you to continue to work and support yourself, you still have to pay the bills. 
Then this comes to lifestyle instant gratification because either A, again, daily stressors. We need to buy new things because we're habits of we're creatures of habit and we tend to want to buy things. Now we come to get no savings because again, it's kind of hard to save when you're having a lot of money allocated towards debt. And because now they're not putting money in the savings, their debt is either A, increasing or very steadily not going away. And then it comes back into work and it comes with this cycle all over again. And so the reason why I bring this up is, again, have a basis of financial education, something that I didn't have, I had to discover. Uh, and typically, again, what I did in order for me to get debt free, I had to eliminate this credit card debt and I got screwed over on two car loans, horrendous car loans, right? And so I had to fix this debt. This is what kept me from saving a lot of money and me having to continuously work, pay bills, buying things that I shouldn't be buying. And then I didn't have a lot of savings. I just started a savings account like when I was 20. Yeah, at the end of 22, almost 23. That's about a year ago. Imagine if I had learned this when I was 18 and started doing applying then. So thank you guys for tuning into this video. I hope this helps out. And again, I appreciate that. And again, also, if you're in this rap race cycle, don't be ashamed. We've all gone through it. I've been there. But do what you got to do to get out of the financial hell that you might be a part of or you might be getting yourself into by getting into bad deals. Thank you guys for tuning into this video and I'll see you on the next one.